Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Pauline Fu. In this video, I will solve three problems in variable screening methods for multiple regressions. Problem one, analysis of footprint in sand. Uh, this is a study about footprints. A group of hard scientists used human subjects, 16 young adults, to generate footprints in sand. The dependent variable of interest was the hair depth of the footprint. Six potential independent variables were investigated. Foot mass, leg length, foot type, velocity, pressure, and impulse. A stepwise regression run on these six variables yielded the following results. So selected variables as a pressure and leg length. Uh, R square, this is not R2, R square equal to 0 0.771. Global F test for P value smaller than 0 0.001. Question A, write the hypothesized equation of the final stepwise regression model. So for this question, it is giving you output. Uh, after statistical analysis, you only have pressure, this variable pressure, and the leg length were selected. So let's say pressure is x1, leg length is x2. So only these two variables are important after stepwise regression. So question A, the equation, regression equation, equation equal to EY, EY equal to beta zero, that is the constant, plus beta one coefficient times x1, x1 is pressure plus beta 2, x2. Beta 2 is the coefficient, x2 is a leg length. Um, so that is a question A. And question B, interpret of R square. Okay, interpret for R square for the model. So R square equal to 0 0.771, which is the same as 77% seven, okay, 77.1%. The interpretation is 77.1% of variation in Y, Y is hair depth. Okay. 77.1% variation in hair depths can be explained by pressure and leg length. Okay, so in other words, 77% of changes in Y are due to X1 and X2. So that is question B. Question C conduct a test of the overall utility of the final stepwise model. So this question is the same as, is this model significant? Okay, so usually you follow five steps. Step one, you set hypothesis and no, no hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So H0 is no hypothesis. So beta one equal to beta two equal to zero. 
right? that is H0. And H1, alternative hypothesis, at least one beta i is not equal to zero. At least one beta i is not equal to zero. Uh, that is step two, step, step one. Step two, specify alpha. You can choose any alpha level. Usually people will choose 0 0.05, choose a level, okay? And step three, you use the p-value method. Why you are using p-value method? Because the p-value is given from statistical analysis. So this p-value smaller than 0 0.001. Of course, this p-value smaller than the alpha we are specified. I specified alpha 0 0.05. So when p-value smaller than alpha, you conclude, reject H0. So step four, you draw conclusion, reject H0 because p-value smaller than alpha. Okay. When we say reject, mean this is H0, reject. We are in favor of, uh, not this one. When we say reject, we reject H0 because p-value smaller than alpha and in favor of H1. H1 said at least one beta i is not equal to zero, means the model is significant. Okay. Uh, that is question C. Question D, at a minimum, minimum, how many t-tests on individual betas were conducted to arrive at the final stepwise model? Remember, we have six variables initially. We have here. Six independent variable, okay? So the first time we need to contact, conduct six tests. And the next time we need to conduct five tests, okay? So the minimum would be 11 tests. Okay, uh, so this is question D. Question E, question E. Based on your answer to part D, comment on the probability of making at least type one error during the stepwise analysis. Okay, so this question asks you, What is the probability at least one type error, at least at least one type one error So we use complement event at least. Y means one minus probability of non, non, non type one error. Okay, use complement event. Okay, now type one error. And then what is the probability of non type one error? You use it is either type one error or not type one error. So you use binomial distribution, okay? So this one, you 11 choose one. And then you have, oops, sorry. And then uh, alpha raised to power zero. So what is alpha? Alpha is the probability of a type one error. The probability of a type one error is alpha. For example, alpha usually 0 0.05. Okay, so this is alpha. So alpha raised to power zero. Okay, and then times one minus alpha. One minus alpha raised to power 11. Okay. 
uh, depending on alpha, people usually select 0 0.05, you plug in, you can get the probability. Um, so this is this question, stepwise regression uh, analysis results. And uh, next question, uh, the data file needed for this question is a clerical data file. Uh, uh, clerical staff work hours in any production process in which one or more workers are engaged in a variety of tasks, the total time spent in production varies as a function of the size of the work pool and the level of output of the various activities. For example, in a large metropolitan department store, the number of hours worked per day, that is our Y, by the clerical staff may depend on the following variable, X1 to X7. The output counts for these activities on each of the 52 working days were recorded. Uh, and the data is in clerical file. Question one, conduct a stepwise regression analysis. Uh, in, in this case, I will use SPSS to conduct analysis. You can use mini tab, uh, you can use R, you can use other statistical software. Yeah. Question two, interpret beta estimates in resulting stepwise model. Question three, what are the dangers associated with drawing inferences from the stepwise model? Okay. So that is the question. So let's do the question one first, stepwise analysis using SPSS. So I'm going to pull out my SPSS window. Okay, this is the data, uh, Y, and you have uh, X, X1 to X7. Okay, so I'm going to try to increase this one. So to do the stepwise analysis, you go to analyze, regression, and then linear. Uh, after that, I may want to read, dependent variable is y, so you put y, independent variable x1 to x7. So quick x1, press and hold down shift, then quick x7 you select multiple items by press and hold down shift, then click this arrow key. After that, in mindset, select stepwise. And then click OK button. So this is our output, okay? So stepwise selected the three most important variables out of the seven variables. The three important variables are x5, x2, x4. Okay. Um, and you have model summary, r r square, adjusted r square. Okay. Um, after that, you have uh, the ANOVA table. Finally, you got the um, coefficients, the coefficients, and our regression equation. We are based on these coefficients. We are based on these coefficients. So I'm going to maybe copy down this coefficients table.
Okay, copy. Copy. And again, I will paste it here. And again, I will adjust my computer. X5, X2, constant. Um, the data is not lining up, or maybe you need to. But this is constant, okay? Constant 77. Constant is 77, and then coefficient for x, y is uh, 0.05h, coefficient for x2, coefficient for x4. Okay, so based on this one, I can write down an equation. Okay, stepwise analysis. Okay, so the equation would be question A, EY. Regression equation EY equal to beta zero. Beta zero is the constant, 77.726. And then beta one is 0 0.058 times X5. And then next beta is 0 0.136 times x2. And the last one is negative 0 0.035 times x4. Okay. So this is a regression uh, equation. Um, I answered the first question. The second question, interpret beta estimates interpret beta x mix. So first we interpret beta zero. This is beta zero. Okay. Beta zero 77. That means when x5, x2, x4 equal to zero. Okay. What is y? And next interpret. This is beta one. 0 point, 0 0.058. That means um, when you increase one unit of x5, y will increase by 0 0.058, holding x4 and x2 constant. So that is beta 1 interpretation. Now beta 2 interpretation, 0 0.138, when you increase one unit of x2, y will increase by 0 0.136, holding x5 and x4 constant. Last one, beta 3, negative 0 0.035. When you increase one unit of variable x4, y will decrease by 0 0.035, holding x5, x2 constant. Okay. So that is a question two. And question three, what are the dangers associated with stepwise model? Okay. Um, the danger is type one error usually is high. Okay, this is one danger. The second one is in this model, we only include the linear, okay? We may consider quadratic part and interaction part. So probably use second order complete model. Okay. So that is the uh, stepwise analysis using SPSS. So last question. Um, the data file needed is MTBE. Okay. Uh, this one, groundwater contamination in wells. Okay. 
In New Hampshire, about half of the counties mandate the use of reformulated gasoline. This has led to an increase in the contamination of groundwater uh, with Masatari Boti and with MTBE. Environmental science and technology reported on the factors related to MTBE contamination in public and private New Hampshire wells. Data were collected for a sample of 223 wells. The list of so the list of predictor, predictor means X, independent variables. The list of potential predictors include well class, whether it is public or private, aquifer, bedrock or unconsolidated, pH level, well depths, amount of dissolved oxygen, distance from well to nearest fuel source, and the percentage, percentage of adjacent land allocated to industry. Apply a variable screening method to the data to find a small subset of independent variables that are the best predictors of MTBE level. So MTBE level is Y, and you are given lots of X. The one I highlighted here are X. The question asks you produce uh, the small subset of X that are the best predictor of Y. Okay. Uh, so again, I will use SPSS to do it. Okay. I'm going to Open SPSS. Try to open SPSS. This is all for, this is clerical data. So quick fire open. Fire open data. Uh, the data is MTBE. I already saved it. So open. All right. So this is the MTBE data. Okay. And those are the variables, different variables. So how can we select the best subset of predictors? Okay, so where is our Y? This number is our Y, MTBE. Other variables are X. Okay, so we are going to use um, SPSS to do this, select the best subset of predictors. Okay. So go analyze regression automatic linear modeling. Uh, after that, um, predictors, actually, I already did it. So I'm just going to maybe select what is the target. Target is the Y. This one, MTB is the target. So I'll move this one to target. No, move this one to target. Uh, other variables are X. All these variables are X. And we want to select the most important X that can use to predict MTBE, that is our task, okay? So this is a field, you design the Y and put all the X here, predictors. 
and then click build options. And we are going to select uh, best model. So click model selection under the build options and then model selection method, select uh, best subset, best subset. And the criteria, you can choose information criteria or you can choose adjusted R square or overfit prevision criteria. Okay, so let's just accept default settings, information criteria, and then click run. So after that, you have this model summary. Okay, model summary. So where is our best predictors? You have to click this button here. Okay. Actually not here, it is a Here. Yeah. So from here, you can see the predictor importance. This depth is the most important predictor, followed by safe YID and then IND PCT. Okay, and then MTBE detect. So there are four, one, two, three, four important um, predictors. There are four important predictors. Okay, uh, so I'm going to and this one use diagram to show you which one is the most important predictor. Depth transformed. Okay, depth. Okay, is the most important predictor. Maybe I will just copy. Uh, one this one here is more visual okay these four predictors are the most important one i'm going to copy this screen and then paste it to my one note So we found the best subset of predictors, these four, four variables, okay, these four variables. All right, uh, in summary, this video demonstrated variable screening method for multiple regressions by going through some problems. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. I look forward to see you next time.